Hello and welcome to the program Sula's Big Adventures with me Sula. In this episode I'm going to be reviewing the Stellarview SVX90T refractor telescope. I love refractor telescopes with their crisp bright images on an inky black background. So I was thrilled when my friend Katie came to visit me this winter and brought her Stellarview SVX90T refractor telescope. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> Katie! Katie, you are so crazy. I can't wait to see your new telescope. And she agreed to let me borrow it for a while. I've been using it for a few months. Uh, she probably wants it back now, so I better finish this review. The telescope has an aperture of 90 millimeters or 3.54 inches. It has a 540 millimeter focal length, so it's f6. It's an apochromatic refractor with an air spaced three element objective lens. And one of the lenses is a super low dispersion center lens. I went to Stellarview's website and I looked at this telescope. And if you click on super low dispersion lens, it'll take you to a whole page written by Stellarview founder Vic Morris explaining the various types of glass used on premium refractors. And I would say that Stellarview is a premium refractor. And in my opinion, it's in the top five, although I've never looked through a Takahashi, but this is a premium refractor. Um, according to Vic Morris, refractors using FPL 53 and FCD 100 glass perform identically in telescopes up to 130 millimeters. And you can read the article yourself. It's pretty interesting. I'll give you the link. I'll summarize it this way though. According to Vic Morris, it's not as important whether the refractor uses FPL 53 or FCD 100 glass as it is how accurately configured the lens is. This telescope uses FCD 100 with a borosilicate lens on one side and a lanthanum lens on the other side. It's guaranteed to be configured at 0.99 Strel ratio. Strel ratios used to only be used to rate the astronomical seeing for assessing the performance of adaptive optics in a professional telescope, but now it's being used to assess the optics on amateur telescopes. I'll explain the Strel ratio as best I can. <laughs> Due to diffraction, or the spreading of light waves when they enter the lens, even a perfect optical system will have a limited resolution in the image form shown by the airy disk. The peak intensity should be found at the center of the airy disk. An imperfect optical system will produce a reduced peak intensity, and the ratio of the reduced peak intensity compared to a perfect optical system is the Strel ratio. An optical system with only minor imperfections can be referred to as diffraction limited. As the peak intensity is focused at the center of the airy disk, a Strel ratio of greater than 0.8 can be called diffraction limited. This 90 millimeter apochromatic triplet was figured in Stellar View's shop in Auburn, California, and it's guaranteed to have the highest optical rating as measured and documented on Stellarview Zygo phase shifting laser interferometer with the Strel ratio rated at 0.98 to 0.996 Strel. To attain this level of optical accuracy, according to Stellarview, Stellarview opticians meticulously figure the objective lenses to attain the highest level of optical performance. According to Stellarview, the SVX models such as this one, perform much better than the older SV models. Each SVX refractor comes with a Zygo interferometer test report, and this telescope came with that report, and it gives it a Strel ratio of 0.996. I own a Stellarview 102 millimeter refractor, and its performance is non-parallel, so I obviously had high expectations for this 90 millimeter refractor, and this telescope met or exceeded all my expectations. 
I looked at Jupiter, Venus. I looked extensively at the moon with a three millimeter Teleview Delight eyepiece, uh, which put the magnification at 180 times, and I was very impressed. I looked at numerous double stars, and although those things are highly affected by the seeing conditions, I was never disappointed. I also looked at some of the brighter deep sky objects, and they were uh, always sharp with high contrast. I also tested the optics on this telescope by defocusing on Polaris and comparing the diffraction patterns on both sides of focus. And the diffraction pattern was identical on both sides of focus. If it hadn't been, I would have told Katie to mail this telescope back to Stellar View and demand her money back. <laughs> I never, not once, detected any false colors on this either. I didn't try uh, to use the telescope for astrophotography. Katie is not interested in astrophotography and it's her telescope. <laughs> she says astrophotographers are people who aren't interested in looking at the sky. <laughs> and so she did not get the Stellar View imaging version of this telescope, which is $400 more. And it includes a riser and a long Lasmandi uh, style rail and a field flattener. The risers and the long rail will allow you to balance the telescope with a camera on it, and the field flattener will convert it from a 90 millimeter visual telescope into a flat field imaging telescope. Instead, Katie got the standard version, which includes dual mounting rings, three inch stellar view, dual speed rack and pinion focuser, two inch and one and a quarter inch adapters, two finder scope shoes, which I really love. I wish all telescopes came with two finder shoes and a stellar view well padded case. For the visual use version, you would order the standard version and you would need your own mounting rail and mount. Katie got this uh, mount, the stellar view M002C alt as mount and this is an awesome mount it's it's very smooth and easy to move around and very sturdy and it stays where you point it with these tension knobs and i may have a hard time returning this mountain telescope to katie you have choices for the focuser um, the SVX90T comes with the Stellar View 3 inch focuser and it's dual speed, but you can upgrade to the Feather Touch focuser, which is also 3 inches and dual speed, or the Moonlight Nightcrawler 3 inch focuser. They cost more, and Katie just uh, ordered the standard 3 inch focuser, so I, I can't speak on the performance of the Feather Touch or the Moonlight Nightcrawler, but this standard focuser it came with is excellent. The entire focuser moves and you can place the knobs wherever you want, so that's nice. And this one had a smooth movement and it stayed put once you had it where you wanted and the focusing was smooth and very pleasant to use and I was able to nail down the focus easily with it. According to Stellar View, the maximum useful magnification for this 90 millimeter refractor is 213 times, but on a very steady night of seeing, you can exceed this power. I, I don't see how I'm using the three millimeter as it is to get to 180 magnification. I guess I could have put a Barlow in it with another uh, eyepiece, uh, but I, I didn't ever try that. I was very happy with this three millimeter eyepiece at 180 times magnification. I don't have any telescopes here that are 90 or close in aperture, except for I have a 115 millimeter aperture refractor. Uh, it's hard to compare since that's uh, much bigger and they're not the same aperture, but I, I would just say that even though this refractor has a smaller aperture than my 115 millimeter, I had amazing views 
through this refractor when comparing it to the 115 millimeter. The objects I looked at were sharp and crisp and had a lot of contrast. Right now I have the Stellar View 90 millimeter refractor on Mars. It's a three millimeter eyepiece and it looks pretty good for such a small telescope because Mars is hard. And I'd say the seeing is average tonight. Good transparency. Um, and it looks pretty good. I have it on this go-to mount, not because I'm being lazy, but because when it's this cold, I, I can't be searching around for things. I normally keep this refractor on that Altaz mount I was showing you earlier on the deck so I can run into the house and warm up if I feel like I'm going to die. <laughs> Next, I'm going to look at a couple of double stars. I also have a 115 millimeter Orion triplet over there set up and I'm going to look at the same double stars with it. It's a little bit bigger aperture but I just want to compare. Right now I'm looking at 145G Canis Majoris. It's an optical double in Canis Major. It's not hard to split at all. In fact you could see it in a telescope even smaller than this one. Maybe even two inches telescope because um, it's 26 arc seconds apart so it's wide but it's beautiful and if you've never looked at it you should some people call it the winter albireo because one star is blue and the other one is gold it's just gorgeous but next i'm going to look at something hard to split and see if i can split it This is a 115 millimeter triplet. I don't know what the glass is. The website doesn't say it, just says extra low dispersion. It's a pretty nice telescope, but it's an inch more of aperture. I could easily split Algebo with a nine millimeter Morpheus. I love this eyepiece, but to make it the same magnification, I put a two time Barlow and compared it with the 90 millimeter Stellar view refractor, and they look <laughs> they look pretty comparable. They they look about the same. It, they both look pretty clean. Okay, I'm looking at Epsilon Boetis, also known as Izar. It's a tight double in Boetis, and it took me a while to split it. I don't know if the seeing suddenly got bad or what, but I did split it. It's tough. Uh, the bigger star is orangish yellow and the little star is white. And now I'll look at it in the Stellar View 90 millimeter refractor. I am able to split Azar, the tight double in Boote's. Uh, it has uh, an orange star that's bigger than the secondary star which is white and smaller and I can split it. Um, it's not super sharp but that is more to do with the seeing because it looks almost exactly the same way it looks in the 115 millimeter telescope even though under the Dawes limit the 115 millimeter telescope should have a better resolving power. It should have one arc second, whereas this one should have about 1.28 arc seconds. So that telescope should have a little bit better resolving power, but they look pretty similar to me, even though that one is an inch bigger in aperture. So pretty good. So my goal in looking at the same object in this Stellar View 90 millimeter refractor and the Orion 115 millimeter refractor was to just see if objects looked the same in both, if they weren't super sharp, uh, because that would mean that probably it was the CN and not the telescope itself. And so since the objects that I looked at in both telescopes looked about the same, even though that one is an inch bigger in aperture and has better resolving power, then I always say that 
last object in particular that wasn't super sharp had more to do with the seeing than the telescope because other things I've looked at were super sharp and so I'm still very impressed with this telescope. Now on the downside, this telescope with an eyepiece, diagonal, the rings, the mounting rail, and a finder scope weighs 12.1 pounds. You may think that's not much, but 115 millimeter telescope and with all those things on it, I weighed it and it also weighed 12 pounds and it's a much larger aperture. But maybe 12 pounds uh, doesn't bother you, but I have found stellar view telescopes to be somewhat heavy. Nevertheless, this is a highly portable telescope at 28 inches long and 18 inches wide and at 12 pounds. The only other negative that I can think of about this telescope is the price. For the standard version, uh, with the standard focuser, it's $2,495 US dollars, and that's a lot for a 90 millimeter refractor. However, it's handmade in the United States, and if you can afford it and you want a portable grab and go refractor with superb optics, then I would highly recommend this tremendous telescope. Or if you want a telescope close to perfect, as possible for your astrophotography. While I did not use this telescope for astrophotography, um, I have used my 102 millimeter stellar view, which is a doublet, and it performed phenomenally. So I, I don't have any doubt that this one would perform the same, if not better, since it's a triplet. Um, but I didn't use it for astrophotography, so you would have to find out on your own. I can't verify how it works for imaging, but I I'm sure it would be great. On a side note, while perusing Stellar View's website, I could not help but notice that Stellar View is now offering a 180 millimeter or seven inch refractor. If you have a lot of money, it's over $18,000, a large storage space or a home observatory or a crane maybe then check it out or just look at it and drool because I think they've sold all of them. But I digress. That's the end of my review of this fantastic 90 millimeter apochromatic refractor, the Stellar View SVX90T refractor telescope. I'll see you soon. Dark skies forever. Sula signing off.